Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem K closest points to the origin. So let's take a look at this example and you can't really see it well, but they have a couple points. So there's one point over here and there's one point over here. So we have a list of points, right? We could have a bunch more points, right? Anywhere on this two dimensional grid, we have an X axis and a Y axis. So each point is represented by a pair of values. This point is one, three, this point is negative two, two, right? And so we can have a bunch more points and we want to return from the entire list of points, we want to return the K closest points to the origin. Now the origin is the uh, center, which is zero, zero, right? So which of these points is the closest to the origin? And in this case, we have K equals one. So from these two points, we just wanna return the single point that is the closest to the origin. And we're guaranteed that the solution is gonna be unique, so there's never gonna be a tie or anything like that. But it could be, you know, in this case, we have K is one, it could be K is two, K is three or something, if we had a bunch more points. So we just wanna figure out efficiently what are the K closest points to the origin. Now, the first thing is how do we know how far any given point actually is from the origin? You know, you might remember from your you know high school math class, or in this case, they actually tell us the actual formula, which does make things a little bit easy. So it's basically taking the X difference, right? So in this case, for this point, the X difference is gonna be one minus zero plus the Y difference. In this case, the Y difference is gonna be three minus zero. And each of these is gonna be squared because you know that's kind of how it works. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is the formula we're using. So if we wanna find C, which is gonna be the actual distance, we'll take A squared plus B squared and then take the square root of the entire thing to actually find C. So, you know, finding the distance, we can do that a squared plus b squared taking the square root. But in this case, we actually aren't required to find the square root because we're not actually trying to return the distance. We're just trying to determine which point is the closest. So, you know, for example, let's say we had something like this that totaled up to five, right? And we had another one that totaled up to four. If we take the square root of two, or four, that's gonna give us two. If we take the square root of five, it's gonna give us two point, you know, something, something. So we're not required to take the square root because we just wanna be able to compare which one is greater, right? Obviously, if five is greater than four, we know that the square root of five is also gonna be greater than four. So we're not technically required to actually take that square root. And I don't know why I'm making this such a big point. It's just that it's kind of easier to code it up then if we don't actually have to take the square root, we just take the absolute difference uh, between the x square it the difference between the y square it and then add them together that will be enough for us to compare two points and to figure out which one of them is actually closer to the origin so once you have that down how can we actually find the k closest points we're not just finding the single closest point that would be easy but we're trying to find k of the closest points well the the easiest and simplest idea that you might think of is just sorting right so if we have a list of size n and for each one of these points we you know compute this take the x difference y difference square it right and use that value to sort the entire list of points the time complexity of that is going to be n log and because we're sorting the entire list. And then once we have that, right, like let's say we had uh, you know, three values or something, we just wanted the first two, which is K, uh, then we can just iterate through the list and find K. So the K is not really gonna change the time complexity. The time complexity is gonna depend on the N log N sorting. But since we're only looking for K points, right, we don't actually need to sort the entire thing. We just need the K closest points. So actually this problem can be uh, reduced or slightly simplified if you use a min heap. And that's gonna be the solution I'm showing you. If you, you, you know, if you already know how to use a min heap, you can probably skip to the coding portion or you know, solve this problem yourself. A min heap is a good way to solve this problem, but I'm gonna analyze it for you right now. So let's still take the simplified example. So like I said, the first thing we're gonna do for every point, so we have the point one, three, and we want to know the distance uh, between it. So we can say, okay, one squared plus three squared, which is gonna give us 10. So this is, you know, the distance actually isn't 10, but that's gonna be the value we use to compare. We're not gonna take the square root because we actually don't need to. The other one, uh, negative two, positive two is gonna be two squared plus two plus negative two squared, which is you know just gonna be two squared as well. So taking both of these together is gonna be a distance of eight. So 
the next thing we're going to do is take these, right? Notice how we put the distance as the first value because when we put this in a min heap, we want this to be the value that we order it by. So we're going to take this and we're going to run the function heapify, which is not n log n. Heapify is actually a linear time algorithm. So it'll basically take all of these, put them into a heap in O of n time. So now, you know, let's say that all of these are in our min heap. What are we going to do? We want to pop from this heap k times because we want every time we pop, we want to pop the closest one, which is in this case going to be this point, right? And of course, k in our example is only one, but obviously this solution could be generalized to if k was two, three, or bigger, right? So in this case, how many times are we going to pop from the min heap? Obviously, k times. We only need to find the k closest points. And what's the operation for, for popping from a heap? It's going to be log the size of the heap, which is worst case going to be n. So this time complexity is actually going to be a little bit better. It's going to be k log n. That's why a min heap solution is slightly more efficient, because if k is relatively small, it's going to be a lot better than something like n log n, right? So this is much smaller, this is much faster. So that's kind of the idea. At this point, you probably know how to code it up, but you know, just to finish the example, k is one, we pop from this one time. Are we gonna pop this one or this one? Obviously this one has a smaller distance. So we pop this one and then we, we take it, append it to our result. And we, we only append the coordinates. The coordinates were negative two, positive two, right? We don't actually have to append the distance or anything. So this will be added to our result. And then we're going to return that result, right? We only need to pop once and we can return that. And you can see up in the result over here at the top, that's exactly what they did. They just returned a list of one point. So that is the main solution. Now we can go ahead and code it up. So now let's actually code it up. And like I said, we're gonna be using a min heap. So initially a min heap is just an array or a list in Python. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna go through every pair of points, every X, Y in the input list points. And we want to go ahead and actually compute the distance. So how can we compute the distance for every point? Well, it's pretty much just gonna be X squared plus Y squared, right? So we can take X, uh, in Python, you can take x to the power of 2 like this plus y to the power of 2 like this and add those together. We just won't take the square root because we're lazy and we know that we don't actually need to take the square root. So then to our points or rather to our min heap, we can append to it this uh, point that we just calculated, right? So we'll append the three values we talked about. The distance is gonna go first because that's the key value for our min heap. Python will use that the first value by default. And we're gonna also append the coordinates of this point as well. And now that we have all those points in a list, obviously that this operation was a linear time operation. Now we're also gonna do a linear time operation. In Python, we can turn that list into a heap like this, heapq.heapify, that list. So it'll reorder the list to make sure that it is in the structure of a heap. And we also want to have a list for the result, right? We're gonna pop k times. So while k is greater than zero, we're gonna keep popping from our min heap. We're gonna say heap q dot heap pop from the min heap. And whatever value is popped, we're gonna append it to the result just like this. But actually, I just realized we're actually popping three values from it. So before we append it, let's get the three values. We're popping the distance, the, the x coordinate, and the y coordinate from the min heap. And once we pop those three values to our result itself, we're only appending two values, the coordinates, the X and Y coordinates. And we're gonna do that K times. So let's make sure to decrement our K value. And so once we've popped from it K times, we can go ahead and return the result that we just created. And as you can see, the solution works and it is pretty efficient. I think a sorting approach would be about as efficient, but this is slightly better in some cases. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.